Welcome back everybody. This tutorial is going to be on military control. Um, as you recall, if you watched the previous video uh, involving supply, we talked about a little bit about military control in that video, but this video is going to talk exclusively to military control because I believe between supply, military control, and your army um, structure, between those three, if you really have a good grasp of those three things, um, the game is going to at least be competitive for you uh, and you, you'll be able to do pretty good, pretty solid things even if you're deficient in perhaps you know some of the area other areas of the game so military control is you hit hot key number one that'll give you your military control uh, dark blue is union light blue is confederate so as you notice if you take the military control tab off it'll give you all these little flags that's basically telling you who has a majority of military control there so as you can see uh, the union has ma majority military control here uh, they actually have a hundred um, we've got 30 and 70 so uh, I'm not quite sure oh sorry it's loyalty Duh. military control 78 and um, would it be 22 and then down here uh, Union has 75 and we have 25 so just because you see a flag there doesn't mean it's 100% um, it could be contested so what does military control do several things and that's why it's so important because it has an impact on on everything um, whether it's movement whether it's combat and uh, whether it's supply, as well as uh, um, detection and information. So notice here we have 90% military control and 100% military control. So first we're going to talk about movement. Um, if you have less than 25% military control of a region, you cannot use the rail system or the river system. So because we have 90 and 100, the Union cannot use the river or rail system starting at this point to get troops either from the east to the west or the west to the east. Uh, so that's the first major thing that's important about military control is I don't necessarily have to control these towns or have troops deep in Union territory to shut his rail system down. Um, I can have just military control and as long as I can maintain dominance of military control, he can't use this rail or river system. Now, it's easier said than done, obviously, because he can do what I did, which is move offensive units into these territories and gain military control. Uh, but just note that that is one um, aspect that military control impacts. Now, I just used cavalry. I moved them in here. Within two turns, they had moved this military control up, and then I got out. Um, he could just move McDowell here in one turn, and it'll drastically flip um, to like 50-50 to 75-25 him. Um, or he can move some cavalry in and start trying to get this back. So bear in mind, it's kind of a game within a game. Um, it's always changing, but, but be aware of that. Another good illustration here is over in the west. Uh, let's see here. So notice i got Springfield right here. And I have military control up to the river, basically, even though he has Rolla, Missouri. Well, that's because I've been using my cavalry where, whenever I can to come up here and try and gain military control. Uh, again, one of the advantages is that it makes it more difficult for him to move through with rail or with uh, the river system. But it also impacts cohesion of the unit. So if I am moving within military controlled areas of mine, then my cohesion is uh, less impacted. Whereas if I go into this area right here with the United States 82% controlled, um, with my army with price, he's going to suffer a little bit more of a cohesion hit than he would otherwise because the U.S. has most of the military control here. So what you do, and I'm going to talk about this in another tutorial with my cavalry tutorial and how to use them, you put some skirmishers in the front, you know, in front of your advance. You know, you put some cavalry, you put maybe a small little unit here to get that military control for you so that I can then push price up and he's not suffering as much cohesion because of the military control issue. Now, another thing military control affects, in addition to the use of railroads and rivers and the cohesion impact on a unit, is the, the, the posture of the unit. So McDowell came in here. We had 100% military control of Harper's Ferry because we've been parked here for quite some time. He came across the river and attacked. Now, he had, because he had no military control, he had to come in as an offensive posture. So he had to come in like this. Even if he wanted to come in defensively, even if he wanted to come in, you know, all assault posture, whatever it might be, 
Um, actually, no, assault posture, I'm not sure, but I do know it forces you into an offensive posture, which says you will attack on site any opponent in the region. Now, you can think, right? Crossing a river at an entrenched position, attacking on site is probably not the best idea. You're going to suffer some significant casualties doing that, right? But because he didn't have any military control of this area, he was forced into that. Um, so that's why it's really important wherever possible to have 100% military control because it forces your opponent into an offensive posture and may force them to attack before they like to um, attack disorganized because they're not taking the time to actually you know set up their lines of attack before attacking all that sort of thing so um, having a hundred percent military control makes it so that they have to they're forced into an offensive posture now I believe again don't quote me on this I'm not sure since I have 95% here because he's now contesting this, he may still have to stick with the offensive posture. I don't know if it's like you have to get 10% or more before you're forced out of the offensive posture. I don't remember. Just know that for sure it's 100 uh, and then maybe, um, you know, 5 possibly changes. Um, one additional thing to note, though, is if you have 10% or more, military control of a region, then you're considered to have a quote-unquote beachhead, <clears throat> which means that your troops can come across in a defensive posture, uh, and um, even though they're going to suffer cohesion loss from crossing a river, they at least can kind of set up a little bit before they attack. They're not going to um, necessarily attack the enemy on site. And so, you you know, if you can have, the, if you have an area where it's like 85-15 when you're moving in, and you have 15, um, at least you'll have the beachhead uh, modifier going for you and you won't be forced into an offensive posture and forced to attack the enemy on site because that's kind of the <clears throat> worst scenario for you as the offensive attacker all right okay now everything i just said by the way does not apply to <clears throat> cavalry irregular units or uh, units in passive mode, so units in this right here, right? So if I moved into uh, Harper's Ferry in passive mode and I was the Union, um, I would not have been forced into an offensive attack on site. However, to be honest with you, that's like the worst situation you want to put yourself in. You would never want to move into enemy territory in passive. Um, so really, I think the rule of thumb for the exceptions to the 5 and 10% rule is Calvary and Irregulars. Um, cavalry do not suffer the penalty. They can move into, uh, for example, like here, I have him in de defensive posture, and he is in a, he was in an area that was 100% controlled by the U.S. Uh, now it's 35% mine. Um, but he was not forced into an offensive posture because he's cavalry. Uh, irregulars are going to be like your partisans uh, and those sort of things. And then one final thing to note with uh, military control before I conclude this video is that if you have 51% or more of military control over a region, then it increases your detection level. So it basically increases um, your ability to see who is in front of you or around you. Um, so here, we do not have 51 or percent or more control over this region anymore. And because of that, we have no idea how many artillery are here. We know there's some artillery, but we don't know how much. Um, so just bear that in mind, that uh, military control also provides you the bonus of detection to basically be able to see who is in a region. Um, and consequently, it increases your ability to um, detect people trying to pass through um, instead of them stealthily going past you. So uh, that's about that for military control. If I missed anything, please let me know. Hopefully I covered everything relating to military control. Um, it's, it's a major player in the game. You don't really notice its impacts because it's all kind of behind the scenes, so to speak. But it does have a major impact um, on your success and failure. So whenever and wherever possible, try and push your military control out uh, as far as you can because it will make a big difference. Um, you know, if anything, it'll just tell you, hey, who's coming down the pipe? Like this guy here, right? Uh, I got cavalry next door. That's why I can see who is there. But uh, if I had military control out here, I'd be able to see someone coming a good two turns before they got to where they were headed. So, all right, with that, I'm going to conclude the video. Uh, the next video, we're going to cover, uh, probably I'm going to cover blockading or cavalry use. 
Uh, I'm definitely going to cover both of those. Um, I'm also going to cover um, the battle um, sequence of events and how battles unfold and how to kind of interpret that stuff. And uh, artillery, kind of some different things people do artillery with and how to use artillery, both in the chain of command as well as um, offensively and defensively. So with that, thanks for watching, everybody. If you found this video helpful, please, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the reason I say that is it's going to help other people find these tutorials so that if they want to play this amazing game and I'm finding it very difficult to play, hopefully these videos will help a little bit uh, in addition to whatever comments you provide that may further help people understand the game. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day.